Agents can quote and enroll for Medico Medicare supplement plans right on the CSG actuarial quoting and enrollment platform. To start your application, you first need to run your Medicare supplement quote. Enter in the applicant's zip code, age, gender, tobacco status, and then you can select different plan types. And then always make sure that you do move your effective date forward to the effective date of the policy. If you want to include household discounts, you can do that there and then hit get quote. On the quote results page, you will find Medico Insurance Company. On the right hand side, you will see an apply now and an add to cart. If you wanted to select multiple plans to do an enrollment, so a med sup and a dental, you can create your client shopping cart. Otherwise, if you just wanted to do a Medicare supplement for Medico, you would hit the apply now button. The first time you hit apply now, it is going to ask that you validate with your agent ID or your Medico writing number. So you will enter in that agent ID and then hit update. We do ping Medico system to validate that you have a contract. It will then say settings updated and it will take you right into the application. You will see that your agent name and your agent ID carries over and the quote on the right hand side will also carry over for you. On this initial screen, a couple things to point out. One is you do have your overview section with the quote and all of the initial documents. So if you needed a copy of the outline of coverage, the terms, the guide, you have have that available here. You can also send those via email. Below that, you also have your sections. Once you enter in your underwriting type and your plan eligibility, certain sections will populate on the right hand side that you will go through and complete. So they are grayed out for now. In the upper right hand corner, you also have your notifications tab. So as you go through the application, if there are any errors in the application, it will notify you here. So to start, we're gonna select our underwriting type. If you are not sure on the underwriting type needed to be selected, you can click on the I icon for additional details. We'll then enter in the plan eligibility, verifying the date of birth, and then entering the Medicare Part A and Part B effective dates. Again, if you enter in a effective date, a Medicare Part A and Part B effective date that does not match an open enrollment situation, this system will notify you of that. Once that is entered, we will then hit continue. And then on the next screen, you will then see where those sections now populate. So if I was doing a fully underwritten application, underneath the the sections, I would have a health information or I would have the opportunity to enter in prescription drugs. In this case, since I'm doing an open enrollment, I don't have those sections that I would have to complete. So once a section is completed, it is good, you will see this green check mark. If there's still information missing in a particular section, you will see the orangish yellow air icon. So from there, we're just gonna go through the application start to finish by first seeing our plan selection. Based upon my Medicare Part A and Part B effective dates, I'm not eligible for that Plan F. So you can see here that I have my Plan G selected. If I ever needed to change that as I'm going through the application, I can do that. And then my premium over here on the right-hand side would update for me as well. For the resident address, it is very important that you are using a correct United States Postal Service address. We do verify with them that it is a valid address. So if you spelled a street name wrong or you entered in an invalid address, that could cause a submission failure. So please double check your resident address. It will then carry over the zip, the city, and the state. Is the mailing address different? We can say no. And then it does carry over that date of birth and then the age, female, and then you can go ahead and enter in the phone number and then the applicant's mailing address. And then hit continue. 
The great thing about this e-application platform is it's automatically going to save for you. So as you are going through the application, it will automatically save. So if you get interrupted, you can always come back into the application. All of your applications are stored in your e-applications panel here. So the next section, we have the household discount. So we do have the definition of that. I initially quoted without a household discount. As we're going through the application, I see that they would qualify for a household discount. So I will have that as yes, and then I will enter in this individual's um, spouse first name, last name, and then as I hit continue, my rate over on the right-hand side will now update to the household discount rate. So as you're going through the application, the rate could change. If you were doing um, a, a plan that has multiple rating classes and based upon their height and weight, it bumped them up to another rating class, that premium would then adjust for you. You can now see that my sections over here have that green check mark as well. So the Social Security and the Medicare number, they are not required. Anything with a red asterisk would be a requirement. I'm going to answer yes to these questions here. Medicare Part A and Part B effective date carries over. Um, automatically no to guarantee issue and then you can select yes to open enrollment and then click that continue button at the bottom. What I really like about the CSG platform for this e-app is you can hop around to different sections as you're taking that application. So if you need to quickly come back to a section or skip a section, all you have to do is click on that section over here on the right hand side. So it's very easy and simple to navigate. Previous or existing coverage information, I will go ahead and select no to these questions. And then I'm going to hit continue on. Now, method of payment section, there is one option for method of payment, and that is an automatic bank withdrawal. The premium that is shown on the quote does include that EFT discount. So we are going to do that automatic bank withdrawal. You do have some different ongoing payment options for your um, payment, whether that's monthly, quarterly, semi, or annual. In this example, I am going to select monthly. And if I needed to change the, the date on here on when that's drafted, I can do that as well. You do also have an option to check a sev uh, savings account or a checkings account. The routing number here works a couple of different ways. You can either start by typing in a bank name or typing in a routing number. Either option would populate your banks for you. You will select that bank and then enter in the account number and then the first name and last name on that account. And then hit continue. If it is a husband and wife that share that bank account, you can just enter in the individual or, or the applicant or one of their names there. As you can see, we have green check marks on each of the sections, so we will go ahead and continue on. This is the to be completed by producer section, so you can read these questions and answer accordingly. No. Once that is done, you can hit verify application. And then the next section, the review and lock application, this just gives you one last opportunity to review the application start to finish. So again, as you're going through here, if you notice you had any errors in the application, you can just quickly hit this edit section button or you can click on the section over here on the right hand side. So once you have reviewed each section, you can then click the blue lock and e-sign button at the bottom. Again, if you have any errors or not notifications in the upper right hand corner, it would not allow you to lock and e-sign. The next is the reading through the disclosures and giving consent. So after that, you can hit that accept and then continue. The print button would allow you to print off those disclosures. 
Medeco has three different signature options. If you are in the same physical location, you have three options here, applicant providing identification information, an email signature link, or a text signature. If you are not in the same physical location, you have two options, the email signature link or the text signature. So if I am in the same physical location and I'm gonna do applicant providing identification information, you will open up each of these forms here to review them. So you have your outline of coverage that you will open up. From there, the terms and disclosures, the guide, as well as the application. Now, when we are filling out the application, we are automatically populating it into the carrier's application. So you will see that we went through the Medico paper and filled it out. So it is a great way for you to have a copy of the application. The payment authorization, HIPAA, and then you would open up the receipt. So once all those items are opened up, the bar will turn green. From there, you will check mark I have received, read, and kept a copy of the above documents. Then the applicant's signature is their mother's maiden name and the last four digits of their social security number. It will carry over the city, the state, and the zip code from the quote. They can acknowledge where they are signing and then click apply e-signature and then it will carry over your producer name and then your agent ID. From there, you will check mark, apply e-signature, and then sign application. So that's one option for doing the signature. The second option is if you're not in the same physical location and you want to do an email signature link, you can select that email signature link. It carries over the email from the application. If you need to change that email, you would have to go in and edit the application. It will carry over your producer name and your agent ID. You will check mark apply e-signature and then you would hit sign application. It will then say that your application is pending the applicant signature. And then the other option would be that text. So it does carry over the phone number from the applicant information section. They may have given you a home phone number. So if you need to change it to a cell phone for them to receive that text, you can come in here and change a phone number. And then it will carry over again your producer name, your agent ID. You would make sure you check mark that apply e-signature and then sign application. Again, they will receive a text to their cell phone with a link and a verification code. Let's go over the options for the email signature link so you can see all of those screens. Keep in mind, all of the screens that I'm going to be showing you for the email signature link would be the same for the text signature. The only difference is going to be that initial verification code and link are sent to their smartphone as a text message versus the email with the signature link. So it carries over the email that I'm going to use and then I'm going to hit sign application. It will then tell me that the application is now pending the applicant's signature, and then it does give me these different options here to be able to view those documents again. If I click on View Applications, this does take me back to my e-application panel where I can check to see where I am at in that application, whether the status is incomplete, consented, locked, producer signed here. This just means that I signed it as a producer. I am still waiting for my applicant to sign it. Now the applicant does have a two hour window to be able to do the email signature. So if it's past that two hour window, you do have that option to resend the signature. It will resend the applicant a brand new email and they will use that new email link and verification code and not the previous one. So do make sure that when you are ready to do the email that your client is available as well. This is the email that your client will receive. It will come from a do not reply email from CSG. It is being sent to your applicant, but you add the agent is also copied in on that email. So you can see here, my email is attached to that because it was on my account. The email will say that your licensed insurance agent for the company, and then it, when they scroll down, they will see the notice that their code does expire in two hours as well. So the applicant can copy or write down this code, and then they'll click on verify signature. 
Once they get to verify the signature page, this is where they will then enter in that verification code and then enter in their date of birth. Now the application date of birth does have to match the application that the applicant is entering. So if you have the wrong date of birth on the application and the applicant goes to verify and it's not accepting their date of birth, you will have to go into the application and edit the app. So please be aware that if they are having any issues with their verification code and date of birth, it could be you have the wrong date of birth in the application. From there, kind of the same screens that you did from the agent perspective, how you had to go through the consent and the disclosures, so will your applicant. They will review those and then they will select I agree. And then they will open up each of the documents so they also have a copy. So they will open up the outline of coverage. They will open that up and review it, as well as the terms and the disclosures, the guide, the application, the payment authorization, HIPAA, and then also the receipt. So they do have to open all of them up. They know they have opened them all up when all of the documents turn green, then they will check mark, I have received, read, and kept a copy of the above documents. They will acknowledge the city and the state that they are signing in. And then they will check mark, apply e-signature. After all that is done, they will then hit sign application. It will then prepare the application and give the applicant a notice that it has been submitted. Once the application has then been submitted, the client will receive a notice saying that the application has been submitted to Medico Insurance Company. And then when you go back into your account, if you refresh your e-applications panel, your status will then change over to submitted. You will see that status now says submitted, and then you can view a copy of that completed application. And then we do have links out to the carrier's website for you to be able to check the status of the application in order to see if it is still going through underwriting or whether or not it has been issued or declined. That is something that you will have to check on the carrier's end. The last status that you will want to see is a status of submitted. As I mentioned, as you're going through applications, you can always come back into them. You can see here I do have some outstanding applications that are incomplete or producer signed. So again, you can always go back in to those applications if you need to. If you would like to learn more about the quoting tool and enrollment platform, please visit our website, csgactuarial.com, where we have our learning center. We have a lot of great tutorial videos for you to watch on our e-application platform. If you have any questions as you're going through an application, please call us directly at 855-861-8776, or you can always send us an email at info at csgactuarial.com.